Hi everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Medicine. My name is Dr. Alia Sani and I'm a foundation year trainee in the West Midlands and today we're going to be talking about prescribing analgesia. So this is something that will come up in your day to day in on call shifts and it's something that you need to kind of get used to doing. Initially when we first started I was checking the BNF for everything including paracetamol but over time you will become comfortable with it so don't get too worried if you're looking at paracetamol or looking up ibuprofen. So understanding the pain. The first thing that you need to do is recognize where's the pain coming from, what's going on, and using Socrates is the best way to do that. So you want to assess the site. Where is it on their body? Is it chest pain? Is it back pain? Is it leg pain? And you want to make sure that that site is a singular site and not numerous sites, which can sometimes happen in things like arthritis, for example. Then you want to know the onset. So like you've done before in OSCEs, you want to know when has it started? How long has it been going on for? We move on to character, radiation. So what's the pain like? Is it sharp? Is it dull? Does it move anywhere? Does it go um, to other parts of your body? Associated symptoms, so anything that happens at the same time? Do you feel nausea and vomiting at the same time? How long has the time um, frame been? So how long has this been going on for? Then exacerbating factors. Does anything make this pain worse when you bend forwards, when you move backwards, walking around, moving at all, which sometimes you'll see in appendicitis where people with very severe pain feel like they can't move um, their abdomens at all. And then the severity. So we always like to do the scale, you know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most intense pain you've ever felt in your life. How severe would you say the pain is? So there are different types of pain that you need to be aware of. Of course, this is a very big generalization and you should take it on a case by case basis. However, this will give you a general understanding of what potentially um, could be going on. So we have nociceptive pain that's to, directly at the nociceptors and that usually causes a sharp pain and it's localized to the area of injury. We have referred pain. That's something you'll see sometimes in people with gallstones, for example. So they have referred pain to the shoulder. So it's non-specific and aching pain and it distributes um, according to the dermatomal area. So it doesn't always happen at the actual area of injury, but rather it refers to another area. Then you have neuropathic pain. So you have that shooting or electric or burning feeling. You especially have diabetics um, talk about this pain in the glove and stocking distribution where they'll have shooting pain or burning pains in their fingers and toes. And that it doesn't always have paresthesia included, but sometimes it can. And then you have ischemic pain, which can be severe cramping or feeling like there's a heavy pressure, which you'll sometimes see in chest pain and things like that, where you'll have a very severe pressure um, on the chest that people complain of, or very severe cramping or abdominal pain, which can sometimes indicate something more serious. And this kind of pain, um, ischemic pain specifically, is relentless. The pain doesn't seem to match what could be going on on the outside. And it always, it doesn't always tend to respond well to opioids either. So there are some red flags that we meet, need to make sure that you assess for prior to just prescribing pain medication. So if this pain is unremitting, if it's not improved at all with any analgesia or position or activity, and it's especially relevant to pay attention to post-trauma or surgery, because sometimes it might not just be normal or, you know, just like generalized pain, then any sudden or severe onset pain, so any severe onset set headaches or chest pain, obviously with chest pains, we're thinking MIs, we want to make sure it's um, it's not an ACS. With headaches, you want to make sure that it's not a subarachnoid hemorrhage or anything um, sinister like that. Then the other red flags are pain associated with visual disturbances, disturbances or central neurological symptoms, again, like I was saying um, about the subarachnoid hemorrhage, but also any kind of strokes or bleeds in the brain as well as to be aware of. And then we have back pain. So with anyone who has back pain, you want to make sure to assess for cauda equina symptoms and also any other neurological pain that you need to make sure you assess for. Finally, we move on to the management. So this, as you, I'm sure you've seen enough times, is the WHO pain ladder. 
you always want to go from step one up to step two and then step three. However, if a patient is already taking step three, then don't not prescribe what they normally take. Of course, if someone's you know been on Oromorph because because they have long term chronic pain, that's fine to then make sure that Oromorph is prescribed. But what you want to do is also make sure we do what we know is effective. So paracetamol regularly is much more effective than paracetamol PRN. So making sure you have that QDS. 500 milligrams to one gram paracetamol four times a day can sometimes be more effective than when patients take it, you know, as and when the pain comes by. The same with codeine, of course, called codamol, if you want to um, link it, uh, if you want to remove both paracetamol and codeine. Obviously, with codeine or dihydrocodeine or, or dihydrocodeine or par tramadol, you want to make sure that you also consider the fact that that can make them quite constipated. And so it's not something we always recommend in patients who are elderly. So just keep that in mind. And then you just go up the ladder if it's someone who's come in with generalized pain, and that will give you an understanding of what kind of pain this could be. And you can assess if that pain is dealt with maybe at step two, maybe it's maybe it's not working at step two and you have to move up to step three. And there are other, obviously, apart from the pain ladder, when we discuss the types of pain, we also want to make sure to treat those types of pain. If it's inflammatory pain, paracetamol can help, but codeine probably won't be as effective as something like an ibuprofen or an naproxen. So if you notice that they have inflammatory pain, it's worth considering prescribing these. And I've given you kind of the general ranges, but of course, always check the BNF if you're ever concerned. PO, of course, is oral, TDS, thrice a day, and then these are PRN doses. We normally don't do ibuprofen regularly, um, but sometimes your seniors can recommend that, that, and that's okay as well. With neuropathic pain, so of course that was that pain we were talking before, the burning or the stinging, you want to try um, the amitrip amitriptyline or pregabalin amitriptyline you want to do at night, especially because it can make patients feel quite sleepy. Pregabalin and gabapentin are much stronger, and usually it's worth flagging it up with a senior before just prescribing it yourself. Finally, prescribing the medication. So different trusts all have different drug charts. These are two examples. It isn't always very good practice to do what's on the left, which is do the PO slash IV, but you can do it if you need to, because sometimes some patients um, don't have very good swallows, and so it's worth having the IV option, or if they come in and they're a little bit drowsy, then it's good to have the IV option. Obviously, here it's at one gram, because the, that, the assumption is that the patient is over 50 kilograms. And you want to make sure you sign bleep GMC number, so some trusts will give you a stamp for that as well. On the right side, we have the PRN version, so you want to make sure there's an indication and a max do dosage. With paracetamol, four grams in 24 hours is the maximum dosage, or you can write four times a day. But again, make sure that you definitely write the max dose for paracetamol, because of course there can be paracetamol overdoses, and you don't want that to happen in hospital. All right, everyone, that's a quick summary on prescribing analgesia. I hope that answers all the questions you have. There is a lot of information on the cheat sheet as well, so make sure to access that and then make sure to go to our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and also we're on Instagram as well, so you can uh, message us there if you have